Thank you very much for your company once again. We have brought the studio down to Mount Maria Mitchelton, Mount Maria College Mitchelton, and um, this is going to be very interesting. Just stay with us. This is going to be uh, something that I think you will find uh, quite riveting as it, as it plays out. It came on our radar. Uh, there's been a lot of talk recently about... Uh, you know, climate change, and uh, while it's been talked about over a number of years, it's uh, something that's been escalating. People have been thinking about it more and more. And uh, the challenge was put, essentially, um, how can we solve uh, climate change? And there's a whole story behind this. And a couple of students uh, look like they may be on the way to making a huge impact on that. Uh, today we have uh, the principal of Mount Maria College, Mitchelton, uh, uh, Glenn McConville. How are you? Good, thanks, Andrew. It's great to be here. Excellent. And we've got a science teacher too. He's been in the middle of all of this. He's the one that first talked to us about this, Peter Ryan. You're a science teacher at Mount Maria College, Mitchelton. You're responsible for uh, these two young gentlemen and what they've got up to. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Andrew. We also have the school captain. Um, you're involved uh, with all of this, uh, James Orman. How are you? I'm excellent, thanks, Andrew. Yeah, awesome. And Alec Park, year 12 student and uh, also in the middle of all of these experiments and uh, looking forward to heading overseas, I believe. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so first up, we might um, have a chat with the uh, principal, Glenn McConville. Um, for this type of thing, when you've got students that are headed to be on a world stage, and we'll get into the nitty gritty and uh, the technicalities, uh, and I'm sure there are a lot. I've seen a couple of science experiments and all sorts of things bubbled and all of that sort of stuff. What does that mean for you in a college like this? Uh, it, it makes me immensely proud that the boys have... Um have, have taken this challenge on and have, have reached the world stage. And uh, you'll hear shortly about how well they're actually doing, but um, so proud of the boys. We've got great opportunities here at Mount Maria for kids to get involved in programs like this, extracurricular programs, and the boys took on the challenge and, you know, we're going to wish them all the best. And we're going to talk a little bit further about the opportunities mm. with a college like this. Um, but Peter Ryan, these students, this uh, was something that played out over school holidays and they didn't take those holidays. Yeah, so essentially uh, these guys took on the challenge um, for this uh, competition um, in their final year, a very important year to them, you know, sort of they're, they're some of our best students, um, so the results for them really matter. And uh, they chose to take up the, the um, challenge, I guess, and, and in doing that pretty much had to give up their holidays to be able to do that. And you mentioned the challenge, there was select, selection criteria and all of that sort of stuff around it. What exactly was the challenge that was set out? Um, so each year the competition, the, the Spellman High Voltage uh, Clean Tech competition, is uh, looking clean fuels basically, but they're basically trying to engage uh, pre-university students, 15 to 18 years. Um, and this year's challenge was simply solving climate change. So you know, That's you know, it, just solve it. That, that, was, that was the... Challenge they set, uh, they don't come much bigger. James, I'm going to bring you in uh, now. Um, you've got a great interest in science. Absolutely. Yeah. When this was put on your radar, what was your reaction? Um, well, I had some kind of out there ideas at first. I'm really into planes and I wanted to do something with somehow harvesting CO2 from the air with a plane. But um, yeah, we came up with a bit of more realistic type of solution. You're brought back end. to earth, is that? Yes, <laughs> yes, brought back to earth, absolutely. Okay, now um, you ran a series of uh, experiments and I take it that the two of you got together and um, had conversations uh, around this and maybe the direction that you might take. Alec, um, how did that all look? Uh, um, at first it was a bit haphazard. We, uh, you know, it's a really big challenge and we had no clue what to do. Um, there was no real set limitations. It was just, you know, hey, solve climate change. So, um, no, we really chose to um, just pick one aspect, CO2, and try and reduce its impact that it's currently having. Um, yeah, so that goes towards solving climate change and ultimately that's what they were looking for. So essentially, uh, what's your solution? There's a huge problem, climate change. It's something that gets talked about It's you know, quite regularly in the mainstream media. A lot of people are talking about it, particularly now that they're starting to notice that uh, you know, there are some real impacts out there. Um, what sort of solution have you got? Well, the main principle behind our solution is you take carbon dioxide emitted from a coal power plant and then you take that to a separate facility where you bubble it through a solution of lithium hydroxide, which is just a chemical, and it creates basically lithium carbonate, which is a useful substance in processing metal oxides or making aluminium alloy. So it's taking the carbon dioxide waste product and turning it into something useful that um, 
has benefit to society? Currently, we can filter out carbon dioxide from flue gas using um, a whole different range of filters. But at the end of the day, we're still looking for something to actually do with the carbon dioxide. So hopefully um, making this process efficient and uh, environmentally friendly um, can you know, limit the impact that it has. Peter, you went along uh, for this journey and you were with the, the students and um, I know when we were uh, talking uh, previously, uh, you were saying like they had tried some other things. Just take us through the journey of how they got to this point and for you as a teacher to be overseeing this, um, your feelings about that. Oh, sure. Uh, look, uh, as James said, you know, sort of they started with some wild ideas and, and you need to, and, and that's the intention of this competition is to engage young minds who aren't, you know, sort of, I guess, hamstrung by, you know, history and, and you know, experiences and all those sorts of things. Um, so these guys came up with some ideas. They, they decided on a plan of attack um, and, you know, bear in mind, their time to do this was fairly constrained also by uh, uh, the other studies. Um, so there was a few last minute changes along the way. Uh, over the holidays, we, um, uh, they recognised there was an issue with what they were trying to achieve. Um, and I think two days before we did the experiment, completely changed uh, their approach. Um, but making those sorts of adjustments, uh, recognising they need to and staying committed um, was part of the journey, I suspect, and, uh, and really pleasing to see them, you know, sort of take that on and, and go after it and come up with something that, uh, you know, sort of looks quite successful. If you look back over scientific history, the light bulb, it wasn't an instant success. Uh, it wasn't something where the first experiment was the result in a working light bulb. The telephone was uh, exactly the same. There were a lot of trials and errors, but they've had huge impacts on uh, society and people's lives. Is this up there with that type of thing? Uh, who, who's, who's to know where it might go, you know, sort of, but uh, you're quite right, you know, so it's amazing how lucky you get if you work really, really, really hard. So, uh, and these guys did, and they've come up with something that, you know, sort of looks to have some promise. Glenn McConville, when you hear uh, this now, you're going to be travelling overseas uh, with them. Can you tell us a little bit about the next phase of this journey and, and what they're about to be presented with? Yeah, I, I think uh, now's, a, now's about putting this into practice for the boys. So the boys have um, been selected in the top 10 positions in the world from all schools in the world who have competed in this competition. And um, they're about to go to New York with Peter and myself and uh, present this to a, to a panel, present their, their report to the panel and their research to a panel. And um, no doubt we'll field lots of questions and um, we're just thrilled for them because now they get to put it into practice. And this couldn't happen without sponsors. We're going to talk about that in a second. But heading to New York, what do you want to get out of this? Uh, well, obviously there's a lot of stuff in New York I really want to see. Um, so we're spending a couple of days in the city as well um, doing some of the touristy type stuff like the Empire State Building or the museums there. And then we're heading off to the competition. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to having some fun in New York. So really. it sounds like it's not all about solving the world's problems, but what about for you too, Alec? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um you know, the competition will be great. They've organised uh, tours around the university, um, Spelman High Voltage, there, and uh, that'll be great. Um, we've also arranged to see, you know, the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum, which will be amazing for us. So, yeah, yeah just a whole bunch of really awesome experiences. Now, you're both students of uh, Mount Maria College, uh, Mitchelton. There's been some sponsors that have come on board to make this possible, one of those being Brisbane Catholic Education. Mount Maria College, Mitchelton have also got behind uh, you guys. Um, you've got the PNF as a part of the college as well. They've also got behind you guys. UQ, University of Queensland. Yeah. So they've come on board. They've, you, you've grabbed their attention. You've got Cleanworks Australia and you've got the local uh, state LNP member, Tim Mander. Now, Brisbane Catholic Education, that stands out to me because they're a um, principal sponsor. Uh, they've put a lot of effort behind this as well as, um, you know, they've put some funds behind to make sure that this is possible. For students coming into a Brisbane Catholic Education school, is this the sort of support that they can expect to be getting? Uh, in short, yes, Andrew. Um, we're, we're really, really grateful for Brisbane Catholic Education and being part of that organisation to be able to provide these experiences to the boys. And um, to, to go to the, the world stage is one of 10 finalists in, in, in the world is phenomenal and Brisbane Cathed have got right behind that and it, and it lines up with their strategic uh, directions as well in terms of, um, you know, just trying to ensure that um, 
we, we have things like renewable energy and the, one, of the strategic pil- one of the strategic pillars is also about responsible stewardship. And, and again, that lines up with um, the Pope's encyclical from a couple of years ago called Laudato Si, uh, which is all about, you know, caring for our common home, for our common, for our common world. And um, that's also primarily why they wanted to get behind what the boys are talking about, because that reduction in greenhouse emissions and so forth, I mean, they're the sort of things that they're really empowering. And these are our, these are our future leaders. So uh, they're very happy to support that. And beyond that, for a college like this where you've got um, two students that are they're at the, the, the forefront of this. They're going to enjoy some of the fruits of it and they've still got a way to go. But what does that do for a college like this now that, like, is a college emboldened because you've seen successes and, um, you know, they've been given the liberties to, you know, go down the path of trial and error, and error, take risks and all of that sort of stuff. Does that broaden out to the rest of the college? Oh, it certainly does. When the rest of the college heard about what the boys had achieved, they were blown away. Um, just today I was talking to some younger students who said, when I get to year 11 and 12, I want to try and go into some of these competitions. Well, maybe I could do that. So the role modelling that these boys have, have shown to the younger kids is just amazing. There's a real buzz around the school at the moment and a huge amount of support for what the boys are So are you do. two celebrities? Is that... <laughs> oh, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to take that yeah, signatures walk, later. Yeah, you might walk into a younger science class and they'll go, oh, that's the guy that's going to New York. <laughs> Yeah, so. So you've been quite candid about that and that's really, really good. Um, does that encourage you, uh, maybe, you know, you start thinking about your future. You're in senior school, uh, maybe, you know, what you want to enjoy and, and be a part of maybe changing society, having a big impact on this world once you exit school. Is that starting to be something that you're thinking about? I mean, sort of, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I... I I want to get my studies out of the way first and then um, have a look towards the future. But, uh, yeah. For a science teacher, um, Peter, how is science in schools, particularly Mount Maria Mitchelton, how is it changing? Is this something that we would have expected to see, say, 10, 15 years ago? Oh, look, um, so I'm a reasonably new addition yeah. to teaching, uh, having a 30-year career in engineering um, and uh, and, you know, sort of engaging with uh, young minds trying to go in this direction uh, is certainly one of the reasons I took up teaching. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess we, we look to challenge students um, in science by uh, experimentation, by uh, doing um, and trying to work out why to engage minds. Um, there's lots and lots of data they can get. You know, we've got much more access to information through internet and things like that. Uh, and so it's really important to get that inquiring mind and develop those sorts of uh, uh, strategies in terms of scientific um, development. And, uh, you know, certainly um, that's the approach uh, at this school and, you know, sort of the, the general schooling approach uh, for science is to, is to develop those sorts of skill sets. Um, and I, I can't imagine that that was available, you know, sort of 10 or 15 years ago. Um, but, uh, you know, sort of these guys have really jumped at it. And, uh, and, you know, the credit really has to go to them because it's, you know, sort of you can provide the equipment and, you know, sort of some support and knowledge, but without the, you know, sort of energy and effort and determination and, you know, grit these guys have demonstrated, you don't get there. Claire McConville, um, just finally, for parents that might be watching this and, They've maybe got their kids going through primary school and, uh, you know, they're thinking, oh, they might have an interest in science or uh, maybe even uh, uh, other areas, might be academic or or non-academic. What would you say to them? Well, first thing I'd say is come and have a look at Mount Maria. We might surprise you. Uh, We've got great opportunities for our kids across areas in academic science, mathematics competitions, uh, the arts, music, sport. There's just so many things the kids here can get involved in and, and uh, be a part of that and, and make a difference and, and learn and have fun along the way. And you never know, maybe they could come here and, and do what, what James and Alec are doing. With all that in mind, all the best. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.